Hi guys, welcome back to Daniel Rosal.tech on Medium YouTube and Ass. Daniel Rosal.tech, I meant to say welcome back to Daniel's Tech World. This is uh this is this was a mistake. But in any event, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I want to show in today's video I'm demonstrating a process for backing up YouTube. Now I'm not the first person to do a video about this, so I do want to make it sort of uh unique and uh in provide I don't know what the tech jargon I'm looking for is provide independent value. There's a few videos about how to do this, but what I want to, uh, it's going to be a little bit longer than these videos because I'm going to show a way to try make to try do this efficiently. Now, firstly, you might be asking, why do I need to back up YouTube? Isn't everything YouTube does secure? Blah blah blah. So, uh, firstly, there's if you're interested in backups, there's an interesting podcast called Restore It All, and they have a good good episode on why you need to back up stuff in the cloud. Basically, you have this thing called the 321 backup rule that you're looking at right now, my diagram on it. And essentially, you want to be backing up. Typically, when people do backups, they're talking, they're thinking about their computer. And you want to back that up to one on site backup point, two backup copies, in fact. One of those is off site. Um, and as I wrote here, ABC should ideally all be on separate drives and physical machines. So, in other words, you don't want to have a backup of your hard drive on your hard drive because even though you can do that with a lot of programs, because then if your hard drive fails, you're out of a backup. Um, and likewise, we do this cloud backup because if your house catches fire or is flooded or everything is robbed, uh, even, if they're, even if these are both encrypted, they're, you're, if you just had these two, you'd be uh, SOL. So you need to have an offsite backup as well, basically. Now for for YouTube, uh, basically people think that this is only talking about local backups. In fact, um, big companies will back up all their cloud data and do this according to at least three, two, one or better. Um, as to answer the question of why, uh, you know, basically your you you could accidentally delete stuff on YouTube. Uh, Google could vanish off the face of the earth. Now I admit that it's not that likely that these things are going to happen but it's still prudent to keep your own backups. So what I'm showing here is how to I'm going to show how to back up YouTube videos onto uh onto the onto a NAS and onto the cloud in a way that I think makes sense. Um and basically the problem with firstly there, there's a couple of caveats. Uh number 1, when you and I've just set up a new YouTube account here so I'm just going to grab a video out of my other monitor I have my actual YouTube account uh, let me just pick one all right I found one that is not ridiculous or embarrassing uh, I'm just gonna drag this in and I'm gonna upload this onto this uh, test YouTube channel over here something about measuring the power I think I was just playing around with a new this is how cool I am with a new watt measurement device and uh, I put that up this is this is an unlisted video so it's not on this or not on Dan's Tech World, Daniel's Tech World or another account so I'm just going to uh, upload this um, and so I'm just gonna have one um, video to do in the takeout because that's gonna make it a lot quicker and easier to explain so I'm just gonna put this up onto YouTube and uh, while that is going on in process I would explain further. So basically, this isn't really, you know, all the YouTube backup videos are saying this is backing up YouTube. This is backing up the videos when they're on YouTube. So you're not going to get, by backing up this way, you're not going to get the videos in the full uncompressed format they went up. So if you're a heavyweight content producer and you're, you know, high definition video, uh, you, basically in, in that case, if you're really, really, uh, this is the last resort type of backup that I still think it's a good idea to take. But if you are making a living from YouTube, um, you know, your livelihood depends upon it. it's really critical. You should be backing up the original pre-production video files. This is both backing them up at the quality that YouTube is going to spit them out. And you're going to be getting them uh, without, you know, post-production. Without, So you're not going to be able to roll back all the edits you made from obviously the edited version that this takes out from you so that's just something to keep in mind if you're just a lightweight relatively lightweight YouTube YouTube user like me um, I'm just currently backing up the what Google takeouts gives me so basically let me let me just quickly explain now I'm doing it I'm recommending an, a, a certain approach for a reason when I just ran this Google takeout uh, it gave me a 30 gigabyte archive now I have a upload connection that's about two megabytes per second i know that's terrible so trying to upload but that's literally what's available in my area attempting to upload a 30 gigabyte archive over a two megabyte 
upload speed it's going to take one hour ele- um, one one ele- one hour one day and almost 12 hours so that's almost 36 hours that's painfully slow even though i'm doing it over the nas so it's not really something i see you don't want to be doing that each time basically in backups you have things called um just to give a tiny bit more theory about this um this is basically if you're uploading the archive every single time you're doing a full backup now full backups means you're just you're just uploading the full thing if you think about it if you have a hundred videos and you upload uh just the zip archive the tar.gz that google takeouts gives you and then you do that again and you just delete the first one that is a way of backing things up but and let's say you added 20 videos between the two times you ran the backup you've basically re-uploaded 80 percent of that data which could be 50 gigabytes could be 100 gigabytes for no reason and you've just made you've just i mean probably in this day and era people don't tend to have upload uh charges but uh nevertheless it's grossly inefficient and for a lot of if you're using cloud object storage you're potentially being billed for moving the data in each time so it's not very smart so that's why um you know, in, in, in backup world, and I've talked a lot about uh, desktop backups on this channel, you have stuff called differential backups. Differential backups means you run a full backup and then every backup is uh, against the full. So each, the next backups are what's changed since the original full backup. Incremental backup, um, you run the full backup and then each backup is a slice against the last incremental. So it's more efficient again. Um, I don't know of a way using using google takeouts i don't it's because it's not uh it's not really a dedicated backup tool it's a it's kind of a data export mechanism intended more for once-off export there's no way that i'm aware of currently to just pull out the change like a differential or incremental therefore to try be to try work with what we have at our disposal um i'm demonstrating today this methodology okay so it starts as google takeout by downloading your full uh, Google Takeout of your of your YouTube videos. Download those to your desktop. Now I'm missing an arrow here, so let me just uh, put in the missing arrow. Uh, then put those onto your desktop. Now, if you're doing backups, then you might have a NAS at your disposal. Um, if you do not have an NAS, and this is the DS, this is an example of the one that I just tried out for Synology, the DS920 Plus. Um, if you don't have an NAS, then you can just keep a backups folder on your computer um, or on an external hard drive, for example, that would work fine. You wanna first, you wanna do the Google takeout and then you just want to do a uh, copy and paste to some folder that's synced with the cloud. And basically, you know, when you're, and I'm, I'm using Linux on this computer, so I know Windows is a bit different, but I know, I know that there is the same kind of functionality when you do copy and paste and it says, if I find the same files, what should I do? And because each file in a, uh, the YouTube file they spit out are just uh, the video title .mp4, um, because of that, uh, I would basically just, um, just do a skip. If it exists, you can skip it. And that means that you'll only be adding the new videos. Now there's another super important thing before I forget. When you're running a Google Takeout, if your YouTube channel is a brand account, the Google Takeout, you need to go in and change to your brand account. So let me just go ahead and do that. Um, actually, while that is running, I'm gonna be putting in a, another video up here. So this um, is another short video, just to have two in the backup. This won't take very long. Uh, I have to do this because it's a new channel. Now, this is really, really inconvenient, but it's the way things currently are with Google. So if I go to Google Takeout, um, I do not have any brand accounts on this demo account. The email is visible here, Daniel Rosal demo. But this, when you click on this icon, this is what you're taking an account for. Now, if you have a few brand accounts, you need to go into the brand account and then run the takeout. If you do not do that, I've just done a Google takeout and it only includes the videos I've uploaded uh, to my personal account. It does not include any of the Daniel's Tech World videos on Daniel on the Daniel Rosehill brand account because that's a brand account so it keeps them separate so the only way that i currently know of to back up all your videos if you have multiple brand accounts is to go through the take care process one by one i think that sucks 
uh, it's uh, inefficient, it's stupid, but that's currently what Google has. There is no functionality that I'm aware of and that I, from what I can see that, I, that actually anybody's aware of that says like back up everything on Google, back, back up me, back up my brand accounts, unfortunately. Um, so I'm just going to put those up and as you can see the upload speed is really sucky today so they're going to take a little bit of time um, but let me go ahead and show you what to do next. So I've gone ahead and logged into my NAS now as I said if you don't have an NAS then you can just create a folder on your uh, local machine on your Windows computer or on your Linux computer um, and you can create a sync I don't know how to do the Windows, as I said before in this video, I use Linux, so you can use a program called rclone, it's a command line interface, so it's something you run in the terminal, uh, and this can be used to sync a local folder with uh, something in the cloud. But just using this, so I, I build myself a shared volume called Google Takeouts, I'm going to create a folder in it called YouTube, and remember what I said about brand accounts, so I'm going to call this one... Uh, well, this is a demo, so I'm just going to call this demo, and I'm just going to call this, uh, then I'm gonna, going to create one for Daniel um, Rosal uh, Daniel Rosal brand account. I don't know why it doesn't like my surname. And uh, I'm going to create one called Daniel Rose Hill personal video. So my brand accounts are going to go in here, my personal videos here. I've then gone ahead in Cloud Sync in Synology and I've created a sync, a bidirectional sync, but you could just do one way from Google Takeouts up to uh, B2. So every, I'm going to be adding everything. I'm going to be using this method for everything in a Google Takeouts so that I, I don't have to upload. What I have done up to now is I've uploaded, I've done a full backup methodology. I've uploaded the whole export. And as I said, that is uh, not sustainable. The more data I'm generating through my Google account, especially particularly these YouTube videos, I'm going to have to do it, start doing it more, more incrementally. Uh, so I've just created the sync job and now I'm going to just go ahead and initiate this test takeout for these two YouTube videos. So my two videos have just finished um, uploading. The second one's in the process of processing. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just do the takeout. I'm going to give it just a few seconds for this to process and initiate the takeout. So you can find Google Takeouts by Googling Google Takeouts, essentially, or going to takeout.google.com. Now, I'm not going to take everything in this demo account just to make this as quick as possible. I'm just going to go for YouTube, this one. Um, now, you can, have, you can have a look in here as to what's on offer. And what's actually very nice is that you can click into all YouTube data. So the only stuff in YouTube I would be really worried about losing and therefore which I would want to back up. Now when, you, when you're doing backups, in general you want to keep stuff as lightweight as possible. So I would, the videos are really what's critical here for me. Um, and playlists, I personally build a lot of YouTube playlists, unlisted ones for my own use and private ones. And if YouTube vanished off the face of the earth, I'd be pretty annoyed about losing those two. So I'm just going to go for playlist, of which there are none on this account, uh, but just to demonstrate that in videos. In format, you don't typically get a choice for video. It's just the original, so there's not much that can be done there. Go ahead and initiate that. Now, if you are on a... Remember what I said about videos being heavy. So if you are using Linux as well, you may as well utilize the fact that they offer a TGZ, which we can easily uncompress. Windows users can uh, export TGZ, they just need usually some additional software. So I'm just going to do TGZ even though it's uh, there's no need at this small this small data pool. And that's it, create the export. And uh, now it's running, so hopefully in a few minutes I'll be getting that notification email to say that the takeout's ready for download. That was beautifully fast, so in the space of about three seconds I've got an email. Click on download your files and uh, you just have to sign in again with your password. And that's it, it's uh, 181 megabytes, which is actually more than I was expecting for these two short videos, but I guess one was five minutes. Now, if um, the maximum size for a TGZ, which is, as he said, a uh, type of archive that's more typically used in Linux systems, uh, the maximum size for that is 50 gigs. So if you've got a lot of videos, you're gonna be getting a few different archives for download. So that's downloaded now. And what you can see by navigating into the folder structure is, you have this folder called after takeout and if you do a bunch of takeout services you'll get YouTube, contacts, drive, etc, etc. Now what I did before, my previous approach was I would just upload this whole archive takeout blah 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 dot tgz 
Voice that up to um, my, and I use Backblaze B2 for for backup storage. I recommend, and I have no affiliation with Back, Backblaze whatsoever, I promise. I just think it's really, really good. It's basically cloud storage that is um, really, really cheap, and it's for backup. The reason it's cheap is because, you know, it's designed for backup is, is their business. So unlike using, for example, Amazon S3, um, Amazon AWS is both more complicated and it's not solely for backup. So if you're using B2, you're getting better pricing. You don't have to worry about stuff like putting it into S3 Glacier, which is harder to get your data out. Um, so B2 is great. So what I would do was I would just put these massive 20 gig folders, upload, upload those to B2. And of course that would take like sometimes two days. And before I had my NAS, I had to literally put a post-it on my computer saying, don't turn the thing off because we're doing a really big upload. And I did this every six months just to protect my data and it was tedious. So this method, I'm just gonna show you now what I will be doing. So what I've done is I've just exported that archive and I'm gonna go back to my um, DSM, which is my Synology managing environment. Now what I would recommend doing is, uh, for example, you're not gonna have uh, demo YouTube and uh, demo. Now you're gonna have to split these out. I know this is really, really painful. If you have two or three YouTube channels, you're going to have to create that. There is no programmatic automatic way that I'm familiar with at the moment and I'm almost certain that there really is none to do this smartly. You're going to have to do this the first time. Give all your brand accounts names. So I'm just going to drop into demo and I'm just going to, I have my, uh, so what I've done is just navigated into my test export folder, which contains takeout, YouTube and YouTube music. And there's only two folders. One of those is videos and uh, there's just, every video has an accompanying JSON file but you get the video in MP4, so all you need is the MP4. If you have a ton of these um, videos, you're downloading more like 200, what you can do, if you're using Linux, of course, is just create a folder just to speed things up for you called MP4, and then uh, move everything.mp4 into that folder called MP4. And you can see in the at the speed of light, um, it's just move those things in. So that's just a little quick hack if you're moving stuff like one or 200 videos. Um, you have you know you have to back up that amount so then basically you can just i'm going to move this off to the side and you can just drag and drop and put in these mp4s and that's essentially it in about 10 seconds they're going to move over the local area network up to your nes and uh basically the cloud sync is already in process you can see the cloud sync icon has changed from uh stationary green up to this and uh, they're in the they're on the NAS, and now they're in the process of up uploading to Backblaze. Now, basically, what I mean here is, uh, in terms of my my methodology, um, you would repeat this process again, however often you think it's necessary to back up your YouTube channel. Uh, that could be once every three months or once every six months, and you you do the exact same thing as I've done here before, but uh, I've just put in a third video and an empty thing called video 3mp 4 You would grab the whole thing again move it in here uh, and you would click on skip. So that's simply checking by file name and if the file name already exists. Now you do not want to do overwrite. I will explain why uh, because when it overwrites data, when it's syncing up to B2, um, it's looking for differences in terms of the timestamp. So you do not want to change those files. You simply want to click on skip and th in a second it's skipped these two videos, it's put up, you can see there's no information in it because it's empty, but if you do that process, you will um, uh, you will not replicate data and you will simply, if this if this was a job running for a second time, you would just be backing up the, you know, the new videos since it last ran up to your account. You wouldn't be deleting stuff, um, you, but that's okay because you presumably want to keep your old videos in the backup anyway. So guys, that's basically it, that's my methodology. Uh, if you want to replicate this using, you don't have an NES, you can do this exact same thing. Just store a local folder uh, for your backups. Just finally to reiterate, Google Takeout, extract the takeout, put that on your desktop. Move that from your desktop to your NES or move it from one folder on your desktop called YouTube YouTube Backups uh, to um, and then if you just on the on the on the desktop you can use a sync tool directly to cloud storage and only have it some use something like rsync which will only sync the changes but you'll still need to copy from the new google takeout into that folder syncing up or you can move it from your desktop onto the nes and simply opt for the skip option in order to not 
recopy the old files and then have that using Cloud Sync, have that automatically sync up to S3, Backblaze B2, Dropbox, Google Drive, whatever you use for cloud backup storage. That's it guys, thank you for watching my video. If you are interested in getting in touch, my website is danielrosehill.co.il. Thank you for watching.